Hello, everyone. Welcome to the webinar. So today's webinar is back to basics. Uh, we asked our clients typically how they did in Q1, quarter one. Uh, were they successful? Were they growing? Uh, and a lot of them saying, you know, stay steady. Some people were, you know, growing. Some people were, were losing typically. So what we're doing now is we're talking about getting back to basics and doing those things that we always talked about, taking attendance, uh, you know, going after our A-rated students for referrals, things like that. So today's about retention and growth. Uh, but we're going to keep it nice and simple. We're actually going to do more of the software training in this webinar. Uh, we're going to show you Perfect Mind 4 as well. So today, if you haven't seen it, and there's probably only a handful who have, uh, you're going to get the first glimpse of Perfect Mind 4. Uh, we are going to show you how we operate things in Perfect Mind 4. You can do uh, most of this in Perfect Mind 3 as well. And if you do have questions at the end, we will take some questions, and we're going to show you exactly uh, when you can get Perfect Mind 4 as well. So typically. We want to talk about the growth formula. So I've mentioned this before in past webinars. So typically what it is is we're trying to get leads. We're trying to convert our leads to members. And typically we want to create loyal clients that we can then ask for referrals. And that's the name of the game. Now, the issue, though, that we've talked about in the past as well is, you know, marketing. I'm going to do marketing. I want to get more leads and so on. But the main thing that you have to remember here is leads are great, but if you're losing your existing students, then it's all for nothing. So we want to talk about closing the back door again. And again, you know, I, I probably sound like I'm repeating myself over and over and over. But the one thing is, is I have the advantage of actually seeing what schools are successful, what schools are typically not. Uh, so the one thing that I can always say is, in terms of retention, the schools that are successful are the ones that are taking attendance. Well, because your existing students are worth more than your actual new students, and I'll tell you why. You've invested money, you've invested time in your existing students. When you lose one existing student, it's the same as losing two new students. You've invested the time in the intros, you've invested the time teaching them, and now they're typically walking out, so you're losing students instead of gaining, ultimately. So the one thing that we want to make sure here is you're keeping an eye on the existing students. Close the back door. Okay, so again, we always talk about relationships. Develop relationships with your students. And then know, typically, when your students are about to leave. Now, this is a simple thing. Quitting is a process, okay? Quitting doesn't happen overnight. And we've always said this before. The first reason you quit is generally a very basic reason. It always starts with somebody stopping coming to class. And we always talk about those C students. So the one thing here we have to remember is when a student becomes a C student, I'm going to explain that in just a moment, that means you typically have about three to four weeks before they cancel. And again, we've always said, you know, I can go to your school and I can actually tell you the people that are getting ready to cancel. So again, rate your students. And we're going to talk about this. And again, many of you probably know this already. The one thing about your students is you can rate them. Okay? An A student is somebody who comes to class on a regular basis. We always say that's somebody that comes to class twice per week. Your B students come to class regularly, but not so often, and they come typically, what we say, once per week. Now, your C students are where they're getting dangerous, okay? The C students are typically when they're getting ready to leave. Those are the people that are coming less than once per week. Now, your methodology may be different. Your definition of a C student may be different. You can adjust that. That's no problem. Obviously, if you're you know, with Perfect Mind, you can rate your students any way you want. And again, you can use your methodology. Some people would say, for instance, you know, somebody who comes once per week is a C student. And that's fine. Typically, though, our rule of thumb is when somebody's coming once per week, you're okay. You don't have to typically worry about them, but you do want to keep, keep them on your radar. So the idea behind this is to contact the C students. And again, I know I've talked about this many times in the past. We're actually going to show you how you go about doing this today. Uh, last time we talked about this, we didn't go too much into the software side of things. We were telling everybody about the importance of attendance, why you need to take attendance, but we weren't really showing people how to take attendance, how to contact C students. So today we're going to get into that. Okay, so we're actually going to do the software side of things today. So the tips on here. Automate your communication with your absent students. So set up automated emails, okay? This doesn't mean you shouldn't be making phone calls. You need to be making phone calls here as well. But the idea here is you can set up Perfect Mind to automatically contact these students. Contact your C students immediately, okay? We're going to show you that too today, uh, exactly how you locate your C students and exactly what to do from there. 
Now, encourage your B students to attend more. And we talked about this as well. You know, you want to reward your A students on the mat. You're always telling your A students, you know, hey, we want to reward, you know, Jimmy for having perfect attendance this month and so on. This encourages B students to get to exactly where the A students are. Okay, so the question now, what do you do with the A students? And this is the biggest mistake. And now we're going to get into the growth side of things. And again, we're going to get into perfect mind after this and show you exactly what you do with the A students. But here's the thing. People generally say, well, I leave my A students alone. The A students are good. They're happy. Well, this is probably the biggest mistake of all. Many of you will probably know this, okay? The tip here is your A students are ready to refer people, okay? The A students are the people who are coming to class regularly. They enjoy your classes. They're going to ultimately refer others. So the idea here is, you know, you don't want to contact a C student and find, you know, and ask for a referral from them. A C student is not a happy student. A C student is getting ready to leave. Your A students are a gold mine. Your A students have friends that they will talk to, uh, talk to and try to get them to come to the school. So we want to talk about that today as well, sending your A students maybe an email blast or um, a mass text message to your A students and asking them to bring five friends. Now, we always say ask for five friends, and the reason behind asking for five is because you'll be lucky to get two or three. If they refer five, great. But the idea now is you have somebody who's happy. They're referring others to you. So you already have an in with these people. The other thing we want to talk about is lead generation uh, events like, say, for instance, birthday parties, uh, Mother's Day, bring your mom to class, bring your dad to class. You can even do events like Valentine's Day was really successful for a lot of people as well. So take advantage of these events. It's really, really important. Now, for those of you who aren't doing birthday parties, I'm sure many of you are doing birthday parties. If you ever have questions about how to run a birthday party, you can always go to our Facebook page. Uh, and we have all our pre previous webinars. We had a great one for birthday parties from Chris Casamasa, uh, all about having a proper birthday party and how to generate leads. So things like that, all of our past webinars have been on uh, our Facebook page. You can go there. Uh, you can also go to our website as well, and they're on there as well. My webinars, Ace Premier's, Melody Schumann's, Chris Casamasa. Uh, again, so you can always get our previous webinars from there. Now, we're going to talk about this because I, I, I said, and we said in our Facebook post as well, uh, and you probably got an email, we we're going to talk about landing pages. So this is a, a big thing right now, and a lot of people don't know what a landing page is. Now, many of your clients of ours, you obviously know this, you probably have one on your website. A landing page is a call to action. It's a lead generation form. So typically, this is just an example of one, $60 off you know, your first month, first name, last name, email address, phone number, and then you can have whatever you want to submit, get more info or something like that. Now, why we're talking about this, and many of you may have it, the one thing we want to show you today is having it, like say, for instance, on your tablet or your mobile phone. So no matter where you are, you can enter in a leads information quickly. Now, you can change the page out here. So the one thing I want to mention is you know, people say, well, I want to know program of interest. I want to know their age. You can do all that. You can add, you know, have put whatever information you want on your landing page. Uh, but bear in mind, when you have a landing page, gen the general rule is no more than four pieces of information. So you obviously need their name, and you obviously want to have some contact information. So bear in mind, when you're dealing with landing pages and you start asking for age, program of interest, and so on, you're less likely to get the information. So a lot of people even say asking for a phone number is too much. Uh, and they generally just go for first name, last name, email address, uh, which is fine. It depends, you know, what you want to do. But ultimately, day to day, you want some way of contacting these people. So again, you can create landing pages. Uh, you can obviously have a landing page on your website. But what I say is have a specific landing page that you can use on your tablet or mobile device so that you can get lead information quickly. Now. Uh, again, I want to tell everybody about, you know, go to Facebook.com slash Champions Way Fans, and you can go to our YouTube channel as well, YouTube.com forward slash Champions Way Inc. Now, I want to get into the actual training side of things with Perfect Mind 4. Uh, so we're going to get into that right now. So again, for those of you who haven't seen it, like I said, probably there's about five people out there who have. This is Perfect Mind 4. Uh, now. Perfect Mind 4 is going to be rolled out in two weeks. So for those of you who are going to be beta testers, you're going to get it in two weeks. Uh, after that, based on feedback, it will be released to everybody. It's going to be an automatic upgrade 
uh, to your Perfect Mind 3 system. If any of you are on an older software, like say for instance Perfect Mind 1, uh, Perfect Mind 2, or if you're on Mass, uh, you can always uh, send us an email uh, at marketing at championsway.com. Uh, and any questions or any uh, uh, any questions related to this webinar, you can send your emails at marketing at championsway.com. We can talk to you about that. So again, this is Perfect Mind 4, and I just want to talk about some of the things real quick about you know the changes here, and then I'm going to get into how we actually deal with A-rated students, uh, deal with the C-rated students, uh, landing pages, and so on. So the idea behind Perfect Mind 4 is it's a completely different navigation now. So you can see here everything's a lot cleaner. So right now we're on the contact page. We can manage our contacts. We can manage documents here. We can take our attendance here. We can create events here. We have our POS system, so everything related to our sales is here. Our marketing area is here, so we can send emails from here. We can create forms. We have our reports, company dashboard. And we even have bookkeeping employees, and you can go to your website from here. So the idea is the navigation has changed. It's a cleaner navigation. It's going to be a lot easier to use. And again, like I said, it will be rolled out in two weeks uh, to a select few, and then everybody will get it after. So I wanted to talk about this. Now, this is still related to Perfect Mind 3. And like I said, the majority of what I'm going to show you, you can do in Perfect Mind 3. Uh, so if you do have training questions about Perfect Mind 3, you can ask them uh, in, in, in a little bit here. And like I said, we always offer live training four times per day. That's going to be 8 a.m., 10 a.m., 12 noon, and 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Uh, and if you ever want to get into our live training, again, just email marketing at championsway.com, and they can direct you to the proper uh, page so you can access our live training. So again, if you have Perfect Mind 3, you're going to have all your views listed down on the left. Now, this is a simple one. It's students by attendance rating. So we're just going to scroll down here, and what it does is it groups all the students down by their attendance rating. So you have your A's, you have your B's, and ultimately you have your C's. And below that you have the ones that are non-active. Now, the C ones are the ones we want to contact immediately. Obviously, the non-actives we want to contact as well. Okay, but the one thing here is we want to make sure that when somebody becomes a C student, we contact them immediately. Now, you can send them an email, obviously, and that's what I'm about to show you right now. Uh, but the one thing is I always want to make sure that you understand you need to contact these people as well. You need to call them. So the idea behind it is, I mean, it's pretty simple. You can just highlight all your C students. Uh, you can highlight everybody at once. You can create a separate view just for your C students. Now, if you wanted just a view for C students, you could say contact type equals active student, okay? And you could say that uh, contact attendance rating equals C. But in this case, you can highlight all your C students. You can go up here, and you can simply say send email. Now, you, the content for your email, and what I've always found is successful when you're dealing with C students, is, hey, we noticed you haven't been in class a whole lot lately. Can you come see me next time you're on the mat uh, and just have a quick chat? Send the email blast out. Merge in their information, and again, like I said, when you're dealing with Perfect Mind, you go to send the email. From here, you can type in your email, and you can insert your merge fields here. So always personalize these emails, okay? So when you're talking about C students, you know, you would say, hello, and merge in, for instance, their name. So from here, obviously, it's going to have to you know, merge in, hello, Jimmy, hello, Johnny, hello, Samantha, and so on. And say, I've noticed you haven't been in class a whole lot lately, it's, and you know, whatever you want to say. But ultimately, at the end of the day, your goal here is to get the student to talk to you. Because we've always said this before, when students stop coming to class, the reason is generally very simple. Okay? But the one thing is, if you let it go, it becomes a very, very large problem. Now. The other advantage that you can do here is with C students and so on, when you're dealing with C students, you can also send them a voice broadcast or say, for instance, you know, highlight the ones you want. Send them a voice broadcast if you want, or you can go and send them an SMS as well. So you have the option to go either voice or SMS. So sending people a mass text message as well, so it goes directly to their phone. So you do have these options, okay? But again, this is not going to, you know, eliminate the phone call. Uh, if you're, you know, say, for instance, you have your front desk staff, you want them contacting your C students on a daily basis. Find out what's going on. 
Uh, if you're one of those one-man or one-woman operations, then obviously you've got to make those phone calls yourself. So at the end of the day, though, you're going to be getting in contact with them in some way. And this is just the, uh, the best way in terms of not missing out on it, is making sure you send out these email blasts, send out these voice broadcasts, send out these SMS messages. You know, it literally bombard the C students and find out why they're not coming to class. Now, the A students, so we talked about them. So the A students are the people that now you want to ask for referrals. So again, you can highlight all your A students. You could create, say, for instance, even just one A student view if you wanted to. And then from here, you could simply highlight the people you want and again, send out an email. Now again, this email that you would send from here would be a little bit different, obviously, because these people are the ones that are coming to class on a regular basis. So they're coming twice per week, and again, that's what we always say an A student is, somebody who's coming twice per week. Ask for five friends that may be interested. And what we always say is put some value to it as well. Like say we're going to extend an offer to you, so if you have five friends that might be interested in martial arts lessons, you know, we're going to give them their first two weeks for free. Now, you can also offer like a referral program as well. Say for every one of your friends that signs up, I'll give you a free month. Different things like this to bring the incentive. And again, put some value to it, okay? Don't act like it's something that happens all the time. If you constantly bombard people with this, it loses the effectiveness. So it's one of the things here. I mean, this is one of the things that Mr. Marketer is very effective at. Mr. Marketer is set up and designed uh, based on timing. Okay, so everything is based on timing with Mr. Marketer. So it doesn't bombard people. When you bombard people asking for leads, uh, that's when they realize that, you know, there's really no value to this. This isn't anything special. So, I mean, the one thing is, is be careful when you do this. Okay, so the one thing is, is if you're going to do it, make sure that you do it once, say, for instance, each month is what I would typically do in this situation. Send the email blast out to the A students once per month, asking them if they have five friends they might want to refer. And then the next email, change it up. Change it up to something different. But again, you always want to offer some value to the students. And I would say a free month. Every student that enrolls, I'll give you a free month. I mean, that's a, that's a pretty basic offer, and that's a good incentive. So I want to talk a little bit about uh, landing pages now. So in terms of this, you can do this in Perfect Mind 3 as well. Uh, in Perfect Mind 4, when you go to Contacts, you have an area called Quick Registration. So imagine you're on your tablet or your mobile device, uh, because again, Perfect Mind 4 will be mobile. And you can go to quick registration. It's automatically going to merge in your logo and information here. And you have your landing page directly from here. So you can enter in your information. So first name, last name, email address, primary phone number, and so on. Now, we also have terms and conditions. Uh, so this is a new feature that we rolled out as well. So once they ha agree with the terms and conditions, they can actually view the terms and conditions there as well. And then they can submit their information. Now, this is obviously you know, something that you can do in Perfect Mind 3 as well. So if any of you are concerned that this is something only for Perfect Mind 4, no, you're completely 100% able to do this in Perfect Mind 3. It's just set up in a different manner. Now, the idea from there is when they enter in their information, they automatically become a lead in the system. So when you're coming into here, you're viewing your leads, you can create automated emails. Now, we've talked about this before. Automate your system, okay? So when you create leads, you want something to go out to them immediately. So when they check their email, they see something instantly. You want to nurture your leads as well. So you can set up things automatically. And, and again, if, if we're not going to go too far into a whole bunch of automated emails. Uh, but the one thing is we did a webinar all on email communication and how to set up all your automated emails. And again, we were talking about setting up like autoresponders and so on. Uh, you can very easily do that. And I went in depth on that webinar in terms of setting up those automated emails. Uh, so you can go on to that webinar. Again, you just go to our Facebook page and you'll be able to see all the filters that we set up. But in terms of setting them up, uh, just briefly, like say, for instance, when you're getting new leads, you would go to your smart list here, okay? And a lot of these lists are already built in, okay? So you can create them as well. 